So, so the, here's what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to start out reviewing a couple of the EEGs and brain maps that uh, Dave has done. So he's going to start with Christine, who we did on Sunday night, and then give us some recommendations. <coughs> and then he's going to talk about Alex, who we did last night, and give us some recommendations in terms of AVE and transcranial stimulation and DC stim as well. So he'll tell us all about that. Then he's going to tell us more about both of those things, the electrocranial stimulation and uh, transcranial DC stim. So, and that should probably bring us to noon. And we'll take a break at some point in there when, when people start to run out of the room. That's when we'll know we need a break. Okay. okay before we get going to, to it's a very special day. Today's my cousin's birthday, and it would really make her whole day if we were all to sing her happy birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Julie. And your twin brother. Happy birthday to you. He got me the video, it's so good. I'm going to send it to your brother. Dave, I think you're standing or sitting. Pardon? You're standing or sitting? Oh, sitting's better. I'll sit down. Is that okay? I'll sit down. He stood for the song. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like the national anthem. That's how important you are. Just don't kneel down. You get in trouble in this country. Guitar, I could sing you some really fun songs. Ooh. I've got a great white north song. It's a quintessential Canadian song <laughs> about when I was in like grade four or five and I decided to see if my tongue would actually stick to a bike rack. <laughs> oh. In minus 30. I saw a movie about that once. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, it's a song all about it. It's pretty cute. It's great. So if someone has a guitar, I can play it for you another time. <laughs> um, is there a guitar at the office? Yes, there is. No, there is. Yeah, I can play that song. I could also play Pirates of the Saskatchewan. <laughs> but a farmer, I don't know if you guys ever heard the song, but it's about a farmer, like Captain Tractor plays it, it's about a farmer who uh, lost his land, the bank took it away, and then so he decided to become a pirate. He's got a pirate ship on the Saskatchewan River, which goes through Alberta and Saskatchewan. <laughs> and he robs other people, robs other farmers and stuff like this. <laughs> Very cute song. Oh, that's great. Except when the winter freezes up, then he goes to New Mexico and plunders down there. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very fun song. Did you get that? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, here we are. We're looking at Christine. And we can see, of course, that she's got all these, a uh, uh, couple of things. You can see where the pink lines are. That's what I did not take when I'm artifacting out stuff. So I did not take the stuff from the pink lines. Also, Christine, when I looked at her on the double uh, Winnie pink line EG. Or, the double pink line or the single pink line? Uh, the the yeah this sir yeah let me just go back to that uh, where is she right here yeah 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 the red line is an overall select line and but this oh, one is okay. the artifact so I the pink here is what I did not take oh okay it looked like they're both pink uh, because there's eye movements and stuff going around in the top because she's pretty busy with her eyes at times but one of the things I need to do is I need to go back into my Winnie E G here and I'll pull up Christine. Christine here, right? That's, that's Alex. Alex. Oh, that's Alex. The wrong one. Let's get right to Alex. Oh, no. <laughs> this is very good. Oh, here's Christine. Yeah, yeah. Christine Theodore. That's right. That was her. Pretty interesting. Oh, I know. I, darn, I keep doing this. Uh, yeah, yeah. The uh, the raw files are over here in, in Mitsar. Remember, the dark side of the Mitsar folders. <laughs> here she is. So eyes closed, Theodore Christine. And one of the things we can do <coughs> with Winnie EG is we can flag 
agitated brain waves. Uh, it's called the spike detection. So it's really looking for pseudotype seizures and things like this. And we can see that it has flagged her all over the place for having very pointed, uh, uh, meaning uh, aggressive brain waves, unstable brain waves. And normally, you know, it'll flag 10 or 20 of these across a person's record, but she's got them in the thousands. So she's got aggressive brain waves, uh, agitation, agitated brain. And that's one of the things right off the bat. So when you see a lot of this agitation, you want to give them things like, you know, omega 3s, vitamin D, and whatever else will help smoothen off this agitation. Keep them away from junk food. Keep them off sugar. Um, keep them off breakfast cereal. That's the normal crap. And anything like that. So she's got them all over the place. They're mostly in the back of her head, 0102. Uh, but uh, it's, if I was to show you, um, uh, Alex says you'd see she has very few of these. But Christine's got a lot of agitation. So David, and we see that in trauma a lot too. So instabilities, that can, of course, you know, um, make her edgy. So would you say, is it, would you say that the agitation in the back of the brain means that when she's perceiving, when, when stimuli is coming in, it just agitates her more? No, I can't say that. Um, Dave, if you were to just repeat the question for the camera, to oh, summarize it. Yeah, does that mean, um, when you see agitation in the brain, does that mean that it's gonna make, like in this case, it's at the back of the brain where vision is, does that mean that when she sees stuff, it will make her more agitated? I don't think anyone has uh, made those types of connections with this yet, but it does just mean that the brain uh, is agitated. They could also, this could also represent a, a twisted axis or atlas bone, which is why I send so many people to Nuka, and they'll find that bone is twisted 10 degrees, and when they untwist it, the agitation goes away. So it could also mean, say, not eating well, um, yeah, this, we don't know entirely all the things, but we do know when you have an agitated brain waves like this, that uh, a person is often quite edgy. That we do know. They're not, they're not as relaxed, generally speaking. So anyway, that's one of the things we do see here, so I thought I should show you that. Now there's other metrics we can do on this too, but we're not gonna get into those. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna close this one down. I got the right button. There we go, back to skill. So this is again, uh, Christine, and all her raw stuff. And you can see she has, when she has alpha bursts, they're big alpha bursts. I mean, they're really, they're really large. And we also saw that she was almost having seizure-ish activity, like right here. Uh, that, those, are, those are darn large waves, big and slow. And when you have that, you're really blanked out at that point. For a second, she'll just be not there uh, when, you're, when you're talking to her and stuff. So you may notice that she's on and off. Uh, one sentence she doesn't get, one sentence she does get. And we see that uh, throughout her record where she's on and off. She also makes a really erratic spindles, like right here, like normally alpha spindles are much more gentle how they come in and out. So her brain is like engaged and then bang, off. And then engaged, bang, off. So you'll find her be very inconsistent to deal with. And maybe you have found that when you're dealing with her. She's very inconsistent. Oh, yeah. Um, if you say, what's three plus five? I don't know. What's three plus five? Eight. You know, what's three plus five? I don't know. What it depends when you catch her. One of the things she says very often is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I can see that. If you're catching her in those I don't know moments. Uh, which pop up, so they, they really pop up in her very abruptly. It's good coffee. So we see that she's like that way all the way through her record, eh? Um, on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. Um, all over, and, and no, in, no middle ground too much. It's one or the other. And she has up so epileptic, ep epileptiform discharges and eyes open she had it too when we looked at her eyes open stuff which um, I can show you again because when you're dealing with her normally in a normal setting you're dealing with her in an eyes open state right so it's good to know how she responds eyes open and eyes open here I'll start her at the front here uh, so we see a lot of things here uh, that's, these are blinks 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 um, Eyes open, 
So there's bursts there that are pretty um, substantial. Lots of blinks. Did it seem like when she was foggy, she was blinking more? People generally will blink when they're foggy. That's very common. Or, or furrow their brow or something. She actually wasn't too bad with that. It's pretty good, but you do see it once in a while. Now here's some, here's a patch where she is really shut off. If you were talking to her here, you're just wasting your time. You may as well just give her a minute. Uh, especially at, um, in this section right in here. I mean, that is very, okay, it must be a message or something. That is very shut down uh, in those moments. It's almost a pseudo seizure, which is very common in people with trauma. And she had another one right here, just a couple seconds later. You see my second markings down below. So this is about three or four seconds later. Another, some significantly big discharges. But then she's able to like gather her wits and focus. And now this here is all suppressed activity. When you suppress your alpha, like we saw with the reading and math task, you suppress that alpha down and for reading and math <coughs> uh, when you're paying attention. So now she's pretty attentive in this spot right here. And if you were to talk to her, she would respond. She would listen to you. Pretty attentive for about a half a minute, minute maybe. That's just a little bit of jaw clenching and some eye blinking. Um, and then she'll start to just drift right off. Well, she's still pretty attentive through here. But then she'll start to lose it. So she has a tendency to be over attentive and under attentive. Uh, and she's not average attentive. And that certainly is a case we see with a lot of people. They, they're just not average attention. They're either too, too intense or they're drifted. And she's, she is like that. She's very intense or she's drifted. Look at now she's drifting again. So she's had about two minutes there of real intenseness. Really, to, and now she's just like, God. Do you think and that- She doesn't know a middle ground. Do you uh, think so. stress leads to that? Like, do you think stress plays a part? Like what she considers a stressful situation, do you think? Oh yeah, yeah, stress and all that plays a part. And you know, and like I say, I used to make lie detectors and um, one of the things you can tell with stuff like this too is if, if maybe maybe something happened here where she decided to be guarded. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't like that person who just walked in the room. Or I hear a dog bark, and I didn't like dogs, so of she didn't like dogs. Uh, right. but, or something, or she had a thought about something, but somebody who ticked her off last week, and it's still bothering her now. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's going on in her brain, but one of the nice things about when you put lie detectors on people is they really, they're very sensitive to arousal. So the moment she has a fear response, it'll go boop, you know, and you can see it synchronized with the brain activity. If she, go, if she gets more attentive on her own, but, but, but it's just a natural response of being more attentive, you won't hear a body response, an arousal response in her body. But if it's fear-based, or something that's very excitement-based, which is usually fear, then you'll also hear the, the, uh, the uh, lie detector go off at the same time. So, uh, yes. So Dave, in a practical sense, if you're, if you're speaking sentences to her, would she like get the first few words and miss the next part of the sentence and pick up the following? Depends when you catch her. Yeah. She can miss the first half and catch the second half, but not understand the first half, so it wouldn't matter, I guess. Uh, she might get the whole sentence when you say it once and then not get anything when you say it again. But if you had a brain map or running and you were talking to her, you would know when to talk to her and when to not bother talking to her. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, like I wouldn't talk to her here. I'd say, yeah, okay, take a break. Wait till you get back. She probably shows you visually. And then, but here, I'd be talking to her. No. You know, here she's engaged. Now this, she's all engaged through here. Now there's a little, uh, there's a discharge there. And discharges are certainly common amongst people with trauma because uh, say, uh, Cortisol damage to the brain, uh, GABA receptors get stripped out, and if we lose our GABA, we get the brain gets agitated and gets unstable and starts to discharge in weird ways. So yeah. Uh, so anyway, now we're gonna look at the eyes closed. Um, I always look at spectral because it shows you exactly what the frequencies are. When we look at the, the one hertz bins, they're all kind of textured over like a bell curve. So they get spread out more, whereas this gives you 
uh, much more definition of what's going on. And what we see, generally speaking here, it's mixed up in her brain. Like we're always looking for an alpha rhythm, right, at 10 hertz. And she's got the alpha here and here, but some spots barely. So I would say parts, some parts of her brain are really disconnected. And to make the good analogy, it's like, say, the alpha rhythm is like the pacemaker. It's the drummer in the band. And if some of the instruments are playing with the drummer and other instruments are saying, oh, I'm going to go play God of the Vita while they're playing uh, <laughs> Over the Rainbow. <laughs> and off they go playing their God of the Vita or something like this, or they're playing at a different frequency. They lose track of the drummer. It, it's just like, you know, uh, a junior high school garage band. You know how bad they sound. <laughs> That's because they're doing it just that way. <laughs> so that exceptional... <laughs> it's not good music. Uh, the exceptional alpha looks like it's uh, up around 12. Um, well, we'll know better when we look at the maps. I think it's a little slower than 12. But, uh, but yeah, it's up there a bit. It might be a little faster than normal. But some parts here are, are pretty low. You can see through here, eh? Pretty low, especially left temporal speech, auditory. Some of the right stuff is a little bit low, too. So now we'll look at the um, microvolts. <clears throat> what we're seeing in the microvolts is we're seeing that her brain is running quite slow. Uh, so she will take longer than average to understand a concept or to uh, reason with, because her machinery is going somewhat slower. She also has some tendencies to be obsessive compulsive, which we're seeing right in here. And, and, and uh, I, I've seen obsessive compulsive in all kinds of weird ways when they show the spots. So she's not strong, and her occipital is still dominating, which is good, but when, when you see that, that big spot, especially over FZ, FZ, PZ, uh, CZ, I mean, sorry, CZ, PZ, and FZ, but stronger over CZ, and she's not real strong. But when you do, I'd say that's her hoarders, counters, cutters, ritualists, anorexics, and so on. But I had a lady that I met, uh, I think this spring, and uh, and she was a really aggressive 25-year-old, really buff, works out in the gym, pushes weights, a tough person. And she came in because um, she'd attempted suicide. Uh, but when we mapped her, there was absolutely no depression in her map. So when I see absolutely no depression in a map of someone committing suicide, it's probably psychological. And it could even be for attention or secondary gain, but not that it's neurological, right? So uh, did I mention about the story about the girl who was getting very suicidal because she didn't want to marry that guy? And she was con considering suicide rather than getting married, but she, her, her record was clean. And so when, she, when I saw that she had no depression neurologically, then I knew it was psychological depression, not neurological depression. So of course, neurological depression, you would treat with brain machines and things. Psychological, you need counseling. So that was the question. Why are you suicidal? What's going on in your life? And then she explained the story that, you know, she, uh, this guy doesn't like him, doesn't want to marry him, but the wedding date is set four weeks down the road. She's feeling really guilty about wanting to cancel the wedding. She's feeling guilty of, like she's gonna break his heart. She's really guilty about canceling 150 uh, um, invitations, and she's looking at suicide as her way of dealing with it. Uh, and I just said, you actually don't have depression. You're in very good shape, but you got a life problem, and you got to address it. So she did. She called off the wedding next day, and then phoned me up and said, I feel really good. <laughs> So this will help you to tease out what's psychological and what's neurological. So her activity in the singular in the eight and nine bins there, uh, you know, one of the things she, she does is if she has a concern, she can't let go of it. So she's not a hoarder or anything like that, but she no, gets but a thought in her head and they get it. Yeah, it. yeah, and she mentioned that app when I questioned her, but especially if she feels like someone has slighted her a little bit and then she dwells on it for days. And that can be too, just because she feels like she's being uh, judged. But you, you, can, you can develop your own OCD over time uh, just by changing your behaviors just like that. As we saw with the lady who had pretty severe OCD when she was using her cell phone, her iPhone and her iPad, 
and was obsessing on buying purses and things on the internet. And we took it away, her OCD cleared up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, she probably has a natural tendency towards it, but it really exacerbated it when you gave her things that she could do. So gamblers and stuff like that, yeah, you lock them up. They lock them away from their ability to gamble and stuff like this, and you'll see the signature will clear up too. So there's neurological, but what you engage in your life will also enhance it because the brain starts wiring itself in that direction, right? Um, anyway, this lady who was really tough, who had severe OCD, but no depression, even though she had attempted suicide, uh, I said, because other things about OCD are they uh, not just hoarders, counters, cutters, ritualists, and anorexics, but also they may be really, really fussy on keeping the car perfectly clean or the kitchen perfectly clean. Anybody do that here? Nope. No, nope. good. Not a problem. Yeah, well, this, she had to have a perfectly clean, perfect kitchen. And she's living at home with her parents because she, since she's not functioning too well, she moved back home. And she had a younger sister. And this lady's about 25, and her sister's like 21 or something. And the sister had a crooked plate. So she proceeded to slam her fist through both walls <laughs> and then through the kitchen, both drywall on both sides. Then of course everybody freaks out. The, the, everybody you know, gets skits, gives her hell every from every which direction, and then she does the suicide thing, which gives her lots of attention and secondary gain and uh, all that. But it's not real, not real depression at all. It's, it's attentional mm -hmm. depression. So that's a counseling issue. But the OCD is definitely real. That's neurologic. But the depression part is not. It's that's that's her. Her way of getting people to who are just who just gave her a whole pile of shit to back off and to feel sorry for her. You know, that's that's her control mechanism. That's how she's manipulating people. So yeah, maps can tell you some pretty cool things like that. Okay, so now we're going to take a look here at um, <clears throat> this is statistical in the database now. And we do see that she's kind of hot on slower frequencies as we saw in her microvolts. So not very good processing, not good attention overall. Kind of ADD on the ish side, and this is probably more likely cortisol slowing, not real ADD slowing. Uh, and we see she's fairly blue up top on all the other frequencies, and those, that's typically a sign of cortical, like actual neurons are not firing well. For very, and it could be various reasons uh, for that. But her activity is low uh, on the cognitive side. Okay, so again, yeah, trying to get her to reason and work things out and come to understandings would be a bit of a process. Especially when you see higher slow activity and lower upper activity, the, the ratio between the two, right? Take a look here, co-modulation overall was pretty good. And we, and, and we could see that, it was pretty good across the board, and, and, and that is good partly if we go back to the raw. Uh, we can see that when she does make her spindles, remember I was talking about how co-modulation in the brain is taking a little rest? Well, her whole brain has a tendency to rest together, and then it's active together fairly well. Uh, fairly well, uh, not perfect, but fairly well. We see this when she said like an alpha, uh, and I'm using the alpha waves as an example, but there's uh, co-modulation for all the different frequency bands. But uh, here's a little band right in here, and it's stacked not badly. This is stacked pretty good. This is stacked, you know what I mean? So the brain, whole brain is active in that state, and it's not in different states all over the place. It goes from state to state to state pretty good in that regard. Um, whereas some people aren't. Some people part of the brain will go alpha, another part will do this, another part will do that, and it's all over the board, nothing is synchronized. It's like a junior high garage band with three drummers. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all drumming a different beat. And some guys will just tune into one drummer and start drumming to that drummer, and another, someone else will be drumming to the, playing their guitar to the other drummer. And, and, it's, and it's really grating on the nerves. Uh, so, uh, yes. So coma didn't have much to yield, and coherence, uh, and coherence again is about the flexibility of the brain waves. How tight are they, or loose are they? Well, in her case, her coherence is kind of it's kind of loose. This is in the delta band. Now sometimes delta, you got to be a little careful with artifacts and things, but I think overall, 
we found that her coherence is a little on the low side, which means the neurons aren't that, um, you don't want them overly coupled or, or too loosely coupled either. Um, most bands, she's pretty okay uh, on the coherence side. I don't always find coherence to be that useful a measure. But once we got into um, phase, we started having issues, serious issues. Phase is one of the most telling metrics we've got. Uh, and this is certainly saying left brain, right brain are not connecting at all well in the delta band. So again, like when you see her speech area there, F7 uh, versus her T or F8, T4, if you were to have her explain uh, an, an object or explain something she saw, she would probably have difficulty trying to explain that. Um, <clears throat> we also know that she's got some pretty big shutdowns in, in, the, in the area of probably appreciating <coughs> the emotional side of music, as well as facial stuff, and to some degree, uh, yeah, um, facial recognition, uh, emotional recognition. Uh, things like this. I uh, took another band. See, we was really strong right in here. Uh, T6 especially has to do with recognizing facial expression and body language, that sort of thing. And we found that, and the more bands they're shut down in the, the trouble, the more they're going to struggle. So socially, she really has difficulty connecting with people's facial expression. She doesn't really know if you're happy or if you're upset or if you're uh, neutral or if you're angry or if you're anything yeah uh, she has a hard time reading other people and when people have these kinds of like remember i was telling you about the guy who really showed it too uh in t6 uh that guy who uh, has his wife has been so frustrated with him frustrated with him for not being able to connect uh, in their marriage and connect socially with her um that they've been to all kinds of marriage counseling and all this stuff and one psychologist said he was emotionally retarded and his wife had been very frustrated with him so that's why when I did the follow-up I had her come with him so I could say to him it's not his fault he really is trying he just can't do it he's, sorry he's just a guy <laughs> Didn't quite go there, my wife wouldn't buy that <laughs> it's not a good excuse no I was just teasing <laughs> I thought that'd be funny. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just a guy. <laughs> Come on in, dope. You can fall on that excuse to women go, yeah, I know, we get it. It's one they'll buy. <laughs> and we see all kinds of disconnects here too. And this is the gamma band here in this case. But yeah, I found that the phase was pretty disconnected. This is front back disconnects. And the faster frequencies are, have, are tied a lot more to cognition within their own areas. How are they processing? within their own areas and integrating um, and getting that information out and uh, definitely really impaired at least in one direction. We can't always tell which direction they're impaired in but um, because if a, if a wavelet, if the wave should be going together like this but one is getting to be 180 degrees out of phase so they're, because it's slow, if it gets more than 180 degrees out of phase it will appear faster than the other wave now because it's ahead of it. Does that make sense? For those who understand uh, geometry and waves, so yeah. So if you're if you're, well, I can't. I would have to draw on the board. I think with the on the paper to show you this. But yeah, if you get more than 180 degrees out of phase, now the it could still be a slow wave, but it appears ahead of the other one now. And so and the, and the software can't tell if you're a wave behind. It just doesn't know that. But it will tell you that there's a serious problem, definitely going on in the circuits, at least in one direction, and sometimes even in both directions. Um, nonetheless, information retrieval is, is definitely a problem. Okay, here's eyes open. And eyes open was kind of interesting. Um, again, we're, this is the microvolts now, and we're, they were still slowed. And, and they're also slowed, surprisingly, on the language side. Now, I do know that Christine doesn't speak much. And, and we see right through Wernicke's on the left side, that's an unusual pattern to be there. And so I would say that if she was yeah, doing language things, writing reports, reading manuals, uh, listening to a lecture, especially if someone is using higher level words, she probably would struggle with that. Have you ever had her write a paragraph about her life or 
coping things or um, we did get another lot. paragraph and see how difficulty how yeah, difficult she does. We did a lot on her iPad because she couldn't make eye contact when she first came in. Sure. And she would write one word. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't write a sentence. Okay. Well, that that explains it. Yeah. I've had conversations with her where I've used fairly sort of like normal everyday language and she stopped me and said, what's that mean, several times. Yeah, yeah, language actually, the left hemisphere, <clears throat> the right side is your more your spatial side, you know, and ever since through a, in, any creature, uh, through an evolution, it's very important that when you're moving around, you're not bumping into trees and things because that's just going to hurt you and smash you up. It's also important that you have good spatial ability for catching food and good spatial ability for avoid being eating for avoiding being food so getting your locomotion and getting your way around is essential and that's the right side of the brain and that part is wired in really well but language is a fairly recent development and the left side where language and speech are evolutionary are pretty new and uh, they're very and those neurons are not solid like the right side is which is why left brain dementia is much more common than right brain dementia which is why um, fevers can really take out the left side if you have a flu or a bad fever you can lose language and speech and stuff and also a logical thought is more on the left side the more more global thought is on the right and so you can get dysregulated with fevers whenever you have a fever you should be really be putting a cloth over the left side, a cold cloth, and keeping the left side of your head cool. Uh, much more, it's much more important to keep the left side cool than the right side cool. Also, um, uh, guys are typically much better at spatial things than women are. We were better hunters, we could, better gamers, um, better at building and, and, and visualizing transmissions, engines, pulley systems, and everything else. We're just better at that. But we're not better at it because our brains are better. We're better at that because we have brain damage. And <laughs> testosterone is, and, and cortisol and testosterone are pretty hard in the left hemisphere. And so just from test, more testosterone pumped a guy is, the, the stupider he is. And you probably noticed this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but the more spatial they are, they, they really will struggle with language, especially guys who've been abused. And they've been uh, as children, and they're and they just been pounded up with uh, cortisol. They really struggle with language, language and speech, you know, very impaired. And that's that's all that cortisol, testosterone damage. Uh, so I got to say, when you when you damage the left side of the brain, it takes its brakes off on the right side, and the bright side goes, phew, takes off, which is how left you know left uh, hemisphere dementia. You end up with savant artists, like somebody who's 60 years of age who's never drawn more than stick people or never played an instrument, a suddenly gifted musician or a gifted artist at the age of 60. And it's because they have left brain dementia, so now that the brakes are off on the right and the right goes wild and it, all these abilities come out. Hmm. Uh, and that's why you see a lot of musicians and artists too, and uh, painters and all that have often struggled with depression because the pre- happiness is in the left side, so if the left side isn't functioning well, your art music ability generally goes better, but often you may have some depression in there too, and if you, depre- if you treat their depression, they may lose their artistic ability. Uh, so weird things like that can happen. But anyway, yes, yeah, she is not only slow at eight hertz instead of 10, 20% slow, but she's definitely into the language section a fair degree there. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's see, where was I? Am I here? Oh yeah, I already did this one, didn't I? Well, this is, well, I'm on the eyes open now, aren't I? Yeah, here we go. So this is the database, and the database is confirming, yeah, the back end of the brain, 20% slow. And she's in the blues at higher frequencies to some degree, which means then that her neurons are just not doing so well on the cognitive side so I mean if she was to learn a skill again too like if she was going to learn a skill she would have to learn a rather simple skill she's not going to be a brain surgeon uh, in this state and especially since she has difficulty comprehending language and reading 
I mean, uh, academics are about, she would probably not too bad learning um, like a trade, like maybe learning how to be a woodworker or learning how to be a plumber or something like that. Uh, Hands-on kind of a trade, not too hard. Uh, she might not do bad, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't put her in an academic program with this brain pattern. So she uh, should probably just get very frustrated and drop out. She's at her best when she's engaged with horses and dogs. Mm -hmm. and exactly and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. And since she doesn't do well with facial recognition, and all anyway, like say those people who have those dropouts generally have a cat or a dog that they just that's their best friend. Uh, when we have 3,000 facial expressions like humans have, at least that's what, how many they've cataloged so far, and hundreds of verbal intonations, hundreds of body language, posturing and stuff, and it's all fleeting second by second. Man, you've got to have a brain that's on to, to engage socially. Socially, engagement is one of the most taxing things on the brain there is. You might think doing calculus or doing brain mapping or doing something is taxing on the brain. No, socialization is the is the real one. It, it's, it, it maxes the brain out. And these people can't do it, so they don't like, so they just stay alone. Plus, when you don't recognize, when you, when you can't interpret, especially if you have a lot of fears and you already feel like you're being judged, and then you can't um, recognize facial expression, unless someone is really just loving you and all over you and giving you big smiles, you're gonna assume that they're being actually, they're actually against you. Uh, and studies even on public speaking have shown that if people are, if your audience is just sitting there straight faced, you interpret it as frowning. Because uh, you're in a fear state when you're public speaking. So this, people, this right? in a way really explains your connection with her. Because you were all over her. And oh, I, I over exaggerated her. my smiles and joking around. Like, you have to over exaggerate it. Say of the, uh, of the hundreds of emotions that we have when you're when you get shut down, especially when you're in a fear state, you only recognize the survival expressions and only when they're extreme. So like happiness, joy, uh, disgust, anger, frustration, lust. Uh, and these are like survival expressions that are basic. There's like eight of them, eight basic survival expressions uh, that are essential for interacting with people, but typically they have to be fairly exaggerated uh, for these people to observe them. Uh, whereas all of us can pick up nuances all over the place, they will not see the nuances. They gotta see it, it's gotta be big. You know, go big or go home. So <laughs> when I'm with these people, I'm big. Big smiles, how are you doing, isn't that great? You know, put on all the... Uh, energy and the charm and and uh, that explains the marco connection too right yeah. i mean because that's what he did he over exaggerated everything with her yeah and he's always smiling yeah okay <coughs> and we see her phase again too really really disconnected and a lot of disconnects are in the back end <clears throat> so sensory perception slow to get to the front it will get there, but it will be slow to get there, and, and, and quite a bit of the social disconnect as well, some visual stuff. I think that if you gave her a video game to play, she would not be happy with it uh, at all. Again, more disconnects. These are more left right now in the theta band, uh, corpus callosum and stuff like this. Um, deep sleep is important for all these times of people good sleep, so get them on the, the drop of vitamin D or whatever else you can, uh, get them sleeping well. Again, in the social stuff, this is now in the gamma band. The gamma's doing pretty good in this case. But, uh, and I can show you other bands too, but when you see the more and more bands that they're struggling with, then the, more, the bigger the problems are. Here's her, here's her beta two band. That's a cognitive band, and look at where she's really, again, taken out really strongly there on the social side. Overexpressed on the left parietal, I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, well, I shouldn't say it's overexpressed, it could be a phase delay, but there certainly is a, the parietal has got phase issues with other parts of the brain on the left side, and I can't tell necessarily if that's leading or lagging. But, yeah, and, but the parietal is also quite tied to language as well. And we're in the keys is kind of in between P3, uh, P3, T5, 
and uh, kind of in the middle there. So anyway, uh, there we go. A any questions about uh, Christine so far? <coughs> oh, I guess you probably want to know what we would probably want to do with her, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, aside from good nutritional stuff, I'd always be, I'm, I'm hardcore about the nutrition. When the brain isn't doing well, you really got to give it good fuel. Um, I think entrainment would be helpful. I don't think CES is going to do much for her. It sometimes can't, put this way, can't hurt. You can always put her on the CES, now that you know how to run it. Um, you might want to do some uh, transcranial DC stim to work these areas here. And, I, and I've got the machine upstairs. I really should have, I'd like to hook everybody up to it uh, if we have time. So I didn't want to leave so early. I really want to give you a little lecture in transcranial DC stim. But slowed spots like this often benefit well, especially like OCD and things too. And, and literally we would put an electrode over those areas, especially the frontal areas that are not doing well. And, and just put the electrode on and you can, uh, they can still read or do whatever they want or talk to you and while they're getting buzzed, but it will, it will definitely improve those parts of the brain, just putting a, a mild current through it, believe it or not mild positive charge, we'll, we'll bring that right up. Uh, there's a lot of work with stroke, with transcranial DC stim. Of course, a lot of stroke people look like this. So what would you run for EVE then? Uh, you know, I would run her faster. You, again, you have to experiment a little, but I would do it morning. Mm -hmm. Probably uh, something in the brain booster section. Well, again, um, let me just pop back to her again here. And I'll look again at the um, at this here. She actually does show some depression, mm -hmm. negative thought, some depression right here. That remember that's the happy side on the left. I forgot to look at that earlier. Uh, so there's an asymmetry between F3 and F4. F4 is more engaged than F3. So I'd have a, I, I would say she'd have a tendency to see the, the negative side of things. The glass is half empty. You know, people are not nice to me, the world is falling apart, um, um, you're an asshole, or whatever it is. She's going to see the negative more than the positive. Yeah. So I would also work that spot, that's probably where I would work first, because if you boost mood, everything else gets better. So I would probably run the electrode on the, the, over the F3 and the right shoulder. <clears throat> we know her right side isn't doing so well either, so I would not put a cathode on the right hand side. I would just use the right shoulder for a cathode. And so the red wire on the left side with the small electrode, the big one with the black wire on the right shoulder, I would do that a few times first and move it around a little bit to the center area as well as I kind of at the hairline on the left side. Also, speech is right next to it, and so you kind of you hit them both, there's nothing wrong with that. It also improves time uh, management, uh, logical thinking, and a bunch of stuff. Reasoning, there's a lot of stuff that's in the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. So, um, yes, uh, I would work with that site first. Yeah, And run the entrainment too, and nutrition. Get her on organics all you can. Omega-3s, vitamin D, all that kind of stuff. You gotta keep that pretty optimal. And so, do you, so for AVE, you run maybe after doing some transcranial, maybe, uh Probably the brain, more, the brain boosters, yeah. Um, she might be okay. I wouldn't. I don't think I would give her an energizer. I mean, she is kind of low in those areas, but you have to you have to experiment with it. Some everybody's got their own zone, and we never know. Ex we know the category to run, but we don't always know what they're going to like best in that category. Right. It's just too hard to tell. And but as people get more in touch with themselves, they're going to realize that one day they're going to want to use this session, and next day they're going to use another session. They start to know what they think is going to work best for them. So you always want to encourage them to start being insightful and getting connected with themselves and, and, and that have that develop that awareness. And as the brain improves, they will develop that awareness. Okay? So that would be my recommendation there, yes. Entrainment in the brain booster section. I'd probably start her off in SMR beta, like the brain booster, so SMR beta then to alpha, yeah. beta alpha. But I would also do the TDCS on the left side. Uh, she also could be a candidate for the happy face uh, because that also is for depression. Uh, either number one or number two. Number two is a little longer. 
Yeah, the number one is 30 minutes, number two is 42 minutes. But that too is meant to reduce depression. Uh, but I have a feeling she'll respond best with transcranial DC stem, which I should bring down in a bit and show you guys. Okay, so take a look at Alex now. Yes. Okay. Okay, here is, is this Alex? Should be. <coughs> yes, here we go, Alex. <coughs> okay. Alex, eyes closed. Here's her eyes closed. She's somewhat different uh, than uh, uh, Christina was. I'll start her off at the front here again. Did you have to look like you gave her the instructions to close her eyes. Did she, was that difficult? Did you have to remind her to keep them closed? She sat really still and nice. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was impressive. It's amazing how, how well people will behave when yeah. you give them that. I'm impressed. The, 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 often the only thing that. that people do that can be a, a problem with eyes closed is their eyes will roll around. And people really can't <coughs> feel their eyes rolling around. But the eyes have a real charge on, on the optic nerve and your EEG is going up and down like this. And you can sometimes just say, just let those eyes relax. And sometimes they just don't know what you mean because they can't feel them rolling. Uh, but she was actually very good. So like when I did my vitamin D uh, on myself, I didn't know my eyes were just rolling all over the countryside. And there's no one to tell me because I did myself. So I had a lot of Delta activity show up. One of the issues that she, now that Alex has got right off the bat is she's fast back here. So information processing is fast, but frontally she's slow. So she would overwhelm really easy. Uh, that one, right? It doesn't take much. She just cannot keep up frontally with the stuff that she's perceiving. So she'll do much better in a forest. Like, take a look at right here, this section right in here. Look how slow her front is going, big, slow wavelets. But look at her in the parietal, sensory motor area, zoom, zoom, zoom. And visually, zoom, zoom, zoom as well. She can't keep up to that. So it'll tire her out fast, and she will not like noisy places, she will not like, uh, and that's maybe why she gets so loud. Uh, I noticed when we ran her on, at least I thought that when we ran her on the uh, CES, she got much more kind of grown up, and, and kind of grounded, was asking you more grown up questions, having sort of a grown up dialogue with you, and, but by the time we got to the bakery, she was starting to get all blabby and scattery again, and uh, teenager-ish. Um, because she lost her groundedness. Look at this other section in here. Big slow waves in the front, but look at how fast she's ripping along here in the back. Uh, going pretty fast. And the database doesn't catch this very well because the percent time isn't real strong, so that's why we have to look at the raw data and see it in the raw. And all the way through here, you often will see the front being slow and the back, and the back being fast. Now, we don't have the right kind of cushions on that chair, that's why I wanted you to get a little one to put up the neck it helps get the electrodes off the chair. In this case, we had an electrode sitting right on the pad, mm -hmm. and that was causing C, uh, PZ to be bouncing around. Well, I tried to move uh, the pad down on her neck, and she said, Don't No, she didn't like that, but it's the wrong kind of pad. That pad will not be comfortable on our neck. We just needed a small little cushion um, uh, to put on her neck, and also she was wearing her uh, big uh, hoodie as well. And probably if we had pulled the hoodie up some, and then I could put a little pillow back there. That's why I've got little teeny pillows uh, at my office, and I generally put them behind the base of the neck. And it gets the electrodes just off the chair a little bit, but they still feel really comfortable, mm -hmm. whereas that big square thing is not gonna be comfortable in the neck at all. Uh, so it was causing us electrode problems with uh, PZ, and it's wandering up and down and all over the place from movement artifact. It doesn't take much movement. Uh, to uh, make an electrode wander. Now look at this right here. That's a theta wave, maybe even delta. These are two seconds apart. That's actually a delta. If you count from the middle section back, that's about four hertz, say, one, two, three, three to four. This is del definitely a big shot of delta. That's not an artifact um, in this case. 
from uh, Lincoln Sun and I are an eye movement. Big shot of delta. Meanwhile, the back of her head is ripping along pretty fast. So this would mean uh, this would this would overwhelm her uh, very quickly in that moment if she had some stimulation going on. She would just not process it at all. And, and we see that through her record. That's her trend. I'd say overall she's kind of like more stable than Christine um, in some regards. Uh, she shows this trend pretty stably. She doesn't really show any big discharges. That could be uh, epileptiform discharges. So he's just mostly kind of slowish in the front. And the front comes, waxes and wanes too. At times it's faster and at times it's slower. There's a slow section in here that I artifacted out because of some eye movement and stuff. But, uh, uh, but the perception is kind of fast and the front is kind of slow. And that's... Look at the, look how slow she is here in some sections in the front. But look at the back, that parietal area is zoom, zoom, just ripping along. Isn't that a Nissan commercial, zoom, zoom, zoom? <laughs> She's doing that. So, yeah, so that's why, again, like, so look, at, look at all this here in the front. It's very, very slow and pretty big, but not epileptiform, though, just really dopey. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter what she says and how loud she's talking, she, well, that's why she often just Flabs endlessly, but it's nothing intellectual, mm -hmm. right? And that's because there's not a lot going on process-wise. Also, you lose your brakes too, and the brain gets slow friendly. You lose your brakes, and off you go. Mm -hmm. And and people will go off in, in different ways. I'm sorry about that. Maybe I should turn the. Um... Yeah, loses the brakes, and uh, and people lose brakes in different ways. But she loses her brakes by talking. Uh, endlessly about nothing worthwhile, right? And also say, and, and reminding you every three minutes yep. about doing something, right? That's just no breaks. Mm -hmm. Three seconds. Yeah, I'm going to say seconds. three minutes, you're being generous. <laughs> so, in a sense, what's going on is her arousal gets really yanked up because your perception, her sensory stuff is going so fast. So, it's easy to crank up her arousal. So, it'd be like a drunk on coffee. You know, you want to make a jackass, give a guy a bunch of Jack Daniels. And then give them 10 cups of coffee. <laughs> and what do you got? Wow. And this is kind of similar idea. Yeah, so she's got all this arousal going on, but she can't possibly do anything that's very high level. So she's kind of like a, you know, an annoying drunk. Yeah. We're not showing this to her father. <laughs> no, no, no. But does that make sense with her? Yeah, no, yeah. Just go to the bar and so, do a comparison, right? You got it's her exactly. It's yeah. an obnoxious guy. Yeah. yeah. And you know, we try to. Or get some really drunk guy, yeah, give him coffees, and then just watch him go. Yeah. Right? Watch how fast he gets annoying. Because now he's got energy to be annoying. Right. And that's the one thing with Alex is when she is um, in a good state, she's very intelligent. Yeah. And you love being around her. When she gets like this, you, you just can't anymore. Like, when, when yeah. you're on the 15th yeah. time of telling her, yes, we're going to go get coffee. Yes, we're it, finally, you're just like, you know, so it's, uh, this yeah. is really telling. Yes, and, and when we put her on the 100 hertz, uh, CES, mm -hmm. uh, she really, I thought she settled pretty good and had a grown up kind of conversation. Yeah. Just because we got her arousal, well, partly because we got her arousal down. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if her brain waves necessarily sped up in the front, uh, but we certainly got her arousal down. If you just get that down, people will be more on, le on the level with you. Mm -hmm. Uh, so anyway, but unfortunately for her, it doesn't hold. So getting her arousal down isn't every five second thing. So uh, you get it down yeah. to logical. You get it Except down. So to if, we, if we do just a straight out one, she stays calm for probably a couple hours. On the on the AVE. On the AVE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we did the beta SMR, she was much better throughout the day, but we didn't have to see yet. Yes, and the CES, you can put that in her pocket, and she can just put the electrodes on. We can program in like a three-hour session on it, and, and she might keep herself pretty level. But her behaviors will slowly morph as, as that becomes her new homeostasis over time. And also, I would consider though doing some TDCS in the front uh, as well, and bringing up those circuits in the front, but not in the back. Leave the, often when you bring up the front because the, the front has a lot of inhibitory stuff and when you wake up the brake, the front it'll put the brakes on the back. So when you go across the whole 
Yeah, generally when we see high when we see high speed activity in the back of the brain, it's because the front isn't putting the brakes on. Mm -hmm. It's just like um, the ADHD thing that I was talking about the other day. When the prefrontal lobes are slow, they're not putting brakes on the motor system, so they're hyperactive. Uh, but you give them speed, like Ritalin or meth, wakes up the prefrontal lobes. The theta activity goes way down, and because she she makes her degree of theta. <clears throat> She's ADE, ADHD-ish to some degree. So anyway, you wake up the guy on the brakes and the guy goes, oh, geez, I gotta put the brakes on. And hits the brake pedal, all the hyperactivity settles down and their sensory motor rhythm gets big because that's the idling rhythm for the motor strip. And so you can actually observe it on an EEG. Right, okay. So that's her raw, this is her spectral. Again, we see a little bit of an alpha rhythm, and so many of these people, like say, like we're seeing, are, are really, they have a thalamocortical disconnect to no alpha, no alpha rhythm on the right side, nothing really here, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. Uh, so SMR betas, um, probably a good idea. Try to reestablish re the alpha rhythm, the loops. That'll, that'll improve her thinking and her reasoning just by getting neurons back on board that she doesn't have working for her right now. Got a little bit in the back and a little bit in the parietal areas here, which is good, and they're a little fast. But, um, whoops, did I turn off the wrong button? Yeah, I hit the wrong button. Oh well, I can get by without it. Okay, we'll take a look now at the, um, so here she is here. And at the microvolt level, we've, she's got a few problems. Again, she is slow frontally, and as we're zooming in, you can see this is her fast stuff happening back here. And if I zoom in tighter, you'll see that happening. So that's kind of the arousal generator to a degree, um, which is why sensory stimulation can really get her hopped up. But also, when you're really slow in the front, you have no brakes, so you're kind of hopped up. And again, she will not be thinking about global warming or politics or the oil crisis or She's just blabbing away. Nothing, nothing sharp, you know, uh, nothing miraculous. We're on a high level. Do you think that the, the slow frontal um, stuff is why she sort of loves coffee so much? Is there any? It, oh yeah, yeah. Often people who are slow frontally like coffee because yeah. it, it, it actually breaks, like, re regulates them better. Yeah. Yep. And she's got a bit of a combo thing going on. I'd say aside from some of this faster stuff which is starting to show, she has both OCD and an inability to reason. And if you got both, and, and OCD often to some degree in, in involves the prefrontal lobes right here. I mean, they're showing up here. If I was to zoom in and out, you'd see them here too. But uh, the prefrontal lobes, which are fear ex inhibiting, inhi inhibition of fears, reasoning, uh, executive decisions are in the frontal area. If you can't make those, and you're obsessive, yeah, yeah, away you go. You know, just away, any superstition and you're off on it. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she's superstitious, mm -hmm. yeah, or has all kinds of little superstitious quirks or behaviors, because um, she's not, can't reason well, and she can't, and she's obsessive compulsive at the same time. Quirks she's got. <laughs> just a couple. <laughs> Unlike really someone who's higher shit. level OCD, uh, even though they're obsessive compulsive, they can still often manage it with their frontal lobes, because their frontal lobes have brakes, and they can, like I say, they may have an urge to do something nutty, but the frontal lobes can kick in and say, no, 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 don't, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You know what? She really does cool not have the frontal lobes to say, don't do it. Yeah. You just validated her, and we have to make sure she knows that because she came to me and said. I've learned that I have OCD, like I've been looking into it and the thing that I have is OCD. And it's not like I have to clean my room 20 times or I have to wash my hands 15 times or tap my foot, that this talking all the time is yeah. my OCD. So that I think will help her buy in a lot. Yes, that she, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I would, yeah, yeah often they, if they see it, it's, it's better. Because um, uh, people will, can put their own intention to it and treat themselves, or, or you know, um, yeah, they, can, they yeah. can treat themselves to some degree just by knowing, yeah. being on board, but if you're just telling them that, they may never believe you. Yeah. 
but then you show it. And you know, I tell you, when I show people this, they're like, oh my God. And they connect the dots and they start doing all kinds of things in their lives. Now, all on their own, mm -hmm. in addition to what we're doing in the office to, to help themselves get better. They just gotta be on board. So anyway, um, I would do definitely do TDCS in the frontal areas for sure. Uh, that's where I would start, and then I would move down the cingulate probably a little later on. And entrainment's fine. CES uh, might help her, well actually we did see it, it's helping her on a brainwave. Um, yeah, yeah, CES certainly has seemed to be grounding her out some as well, but I would probably think the TDCS and entrainment will do better. And where would you put it? But in the nice thing about CES, you can put the unit in a pocket and run a three hour protocol and keep pretty steady while she's you know, engaging uh, and having a life still. And what would you do on the entrainment? What would you do? The entrainment, I'd definitely be running her on stuff like uh, SMR, oh. SMR beta, uh, that kind of thing. Speed up that brain. Okay. Yeah. So, and then we do, do and we that'll do. probably get rid of this 11 hertz stuff right in here when we get the brakes off this. Okay. Or put the brakes on this, I mean, by speeding it up. Mm -hmm. We'll right She'd probably there. be a pretty good Ritalin responder or, or something like that, yeah. a meth responder probably as well. And she likes coffee because that's, yeah. coffee's probably clearing this up. Coffee increases norepinephrine in the brain, that's the whole idea. And, which, and norepinephrine modulates the frequency, your resting alpha frequency. So you get, her on norp, you get her on coffee, it'll probably speed it up by a couple of hertz and she actually gets a little sharper and a little more grounded hmm. from her coffee. Is that caffeine generally or just coffee? Yeah, caffeine in general. Yeah, yeah, caffeine. Yeah, yeah. Get her on Red Bull. She'd probably even do better. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't give her too much Red Bull. Why She's surprised you give her a Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> well, that way, which may wind us, you know, to the rafters, may actually settle her right down. You know, it's interesting because Alex is the kind of person who you would never in a million years think speeding her up would be a part of the solution. Right. Well, it's, I mean, in it's, fact, it, like that is so counterintuitive to her presentation, but if you yes. look at her brain, it makes perfect sense. Yes, it's all, a lot yeah, of the stuff really is counterintuitive. You have to like say, like, how could giving someone meth calm mm -hmm. them down? Yeah. It's counterintuitive, but it's because we're working with inhibition circuits, not excitatory circuits. And when yeah. you uh, turn on the inhibition circuits, which are frontal, they calm everything else down. That's why meth works with real ADHD. And real ADHD has a big theta wave component in the frontal lobes, a lot like her. Except real ADHD is typically more on the right side. And why, that's why you see more impulsiveness and stuff. Uh, I would say she has no depression. I really just don't see it. If she does show depression, it's maybe for attention or because she's ticked off or about things, but it's psychological. I don't think neurological really shows it because your left and right sides are very balanced out. Remember, you're kind of your fear side. If you've got more alpha on the left than you do on the right, you're gonna have depression, as I showed in that guy who was you know, afraid to drive across the river because he was gonna jump off the bridge. Um, uh, typically, antidepressants don't actually clear up that signature. What they do is they spindle out beta and make a manic. Manic depressive. So now she's coming off the Watch SSRIs, and and almost all SSRIs will make little beta spindlets. Uh, yeah, and uh, they'll be spindling in beta, so they're still kind of depressed, but they're like this. <laughs> yeah, agitated depression almost. So they yeah. did start with the TV They get pretty manic. Right up front here, and then work up the table like that? Uh, yeah, I was certainly to the TDCS, right in the front, probably with a neck placement. Yeah. Yep, and then slowly work it back. Yep. Maybe work the left side a little more just to make sure you keep her in a happy uh, mindset, right? Mm -hmm. So I would do some of the front with the, with the skinny one. Yeah. Do FP1, FP2, then some F3, FP1, FP2, F3, maybe bounce it around. If you do FP1, FP2, use the neck. If you do F3, use the shoulder, the other shoulder. Mm -hmm. And then do that some, and then maybe start working it back some. But as her prefrontal lobes engage, she's also going to start it reasoning better and she's going to start shutting down that OCD by herself because now she's going to have some more breaks yeah. more breaks on it yeah but we'll get to the OCD as well I would say later on yeah so yeah so that's what I would do with that so right in here in the front right and then some on the left and then in the front some on the left and then after half a dozen sessions of each then maybe start moving it more in the center 
And this is where it's nice to be able to do a follow-up brain map in a couple of months, although you can symptomatically tell to a degree, because since we have a, a baseline brain map, um, we know where she's coming, from. we know her starting point, yeah. right? So it, symptomatically you can work that probably and do not too badly, but it doesn't hurt often during uh, therapy to uh, run a brain map a month or two down the road, right? And uh, just see now how things have changed. <clears throat> this is her now Z score. And like I said, anything over one and a half, two standard deviations is considered clinical. I've got her at four. Wow. And she's still maxed out beyond four. Because she's all on the pink, so she's at the ceiling. So if I increase this to five, we will see some of this pink will go away, but we'll see how far she actually is off the zone. So here she is at five. So her issues are almost entirely prefrontal. She would be, I would say, a good candidate probably for uh, uh, me uh, methylphenidate yeah. as well, if you wanted to go that route, because right, uh, it'll wake up those frontal lobes pretty strong. Often that's a good test for ADHD, because so many, I can say there's so many causes of ADHD behavior, but they're not really ADHD at all. They just make people, right? everything from bad sleep to stress to living around airports to fluoride in your water, low thyroid, little seizures, all kinds of stuff will make you inattentive, hyperactive, and impulsive. That's a general sign of a brain that's just not working that well. Uh, but if it's true ADHD uh, with a high frontal theta, then when you put them on uh, meth, they respond immediately. And that's one acid test to see if it's real or not. Mm -hmm. Or something else. Alrighty, so yeah, so she has five standard deviations off her, which is seriously high. Um, and in the whole prefrontal, so that's TDCS all the way through there. FP1, FP2, and I'd work F3 some as well, just to be sure, but overall, I mean, when you look at the distribution here, yeah, it looks like there's a, it might be almost a smidge and stronger. Well, it's hard to tell. Yeah. I would say she really doesn't have depression in her, in her record. Mm. Not neurological. Yeah, okay, and this is now on the entropy, which shows a little more definition. And on entropy, at two and a half standard deviations, of course, we, she, she's all hammered out in the slow stuff. She's missing her, her theta, I mean her, her uh, Largely, she's missing her alpha rhythm. And you can see more exaggerated here uh, that she's got that fast running stuff and the sensory overload stuff. I'll zoom this out now so we can take a better look at this. And as we zoom out, four standard deviations. I'm at four and a half here. Maybe I'll just pull it in a little bit. And again, it's showing frontal, pretty slow on the frontal. You almost got to wonder if she didn't have a hit there once at some point in her life. Um, that's possible. She may have had a hit or a noxic birth maybe, but that, that could also be some kind of a trauma where she fell down the stairs, uh, fell off her bike, and whacked her frontal lobe pretty hard at one point. You can never rule that out when you see stuff like this, and it's quite well defined. Remember the guy was bouncing soccer balls off his head? Yeah. Big right here where he bounced the soccer ball he was all toasted um, yeah so I would consider that she's also quite slow you know that's the other thing too quite slow four hertz of dominant at four hertz so um, that's pretty slow okay so this is her co-modulation now co-modulation in Delta um, because and this is why you always got to look at your rod you can't count on a machine uh, to process your artifacts. Because we have problems with CZ or CZ, you can see how we're, see how it's rolling up and down and up and down. Well, that's a lot of Delta stuff going on just from the artifact. So we've got, we've got fake artifact with CZ and Delta. So uh, I'm gonna suggest I would not, this is meaningless. This means we had a bad electrode. That thing was hitting on that, that pad and bouncing around. So I would discount that entirely. So that's why you always, whenever you see something, you always gotta go back to your raw 
and say, okay, I see this in the metric. What does the raw show? You got to go back and forth. And sometimes you got to stare at your raw for a while um, before you can make heads or tails of it. Chromodulation, uh, you see particularly F8, <coughs> T3. Remember F8 issues? So you've got the prefrontal issues, of course, we know. We've already seen a lot of that. T3 is auditory issues. Uh, she, uh, 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 F8 issues have to do with looking for threatening salience in the background. Just something, and boy, was she, when she decides she's not happy with something, she is not happy. Mm -hmm. And that's partly an F8 issue. But if we were to look back in the raw and say, okay, T3 and F8 particularly, and F2 and FB2 as well, but they've got comod problems, which means in alpha, which means those spindles are not lining up well. If we go back to the raw, we should be able to see that. And so I always say, check back to the raw. Um, of course, we've got to find out which waves are wavelet, which wavelets are alpha. These ones are a little fast at about 12, which could be in the which would be in the alpha band anyway. So it's probably got more to do with, to some degree with some of this stuff going on, but there'll be more. Uh, there'll be more bursts. Uh, I just have to find them. Uh, here's a nice alpha burst here, uh, right in this section here, and this is too why when you when you take when you're artifacting this, you should try to get wide chunks. Uh, some people are just chopping it up into little bits. But, uh, but co-modulation has to do with spindles. And spindles come and they go. They come for a couple of seconds and they go. Sometimes, of course, they're 10 seconds long. Uh, but a proper spindle is one to two seconds long. And if you're chopping up your samples into small little bits, you don't see the start and ends of your spindles. And then the co-modulation -modul will say everything is awesome when things might be actually be a train wreck. So you try to get wider samples whenever you can, which is, means then you gotta get a good recording at the onset. If you've got a bad recording at the onset, you'll never get those wide samples because there's too much artifact all over the place and then you'll make your comod look great. What percentage do you uh, artifact? Like half? Oh, uh, it depends on the person. Anywhere it's from 10% to 90. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and one of the things I really don't like is streaming is streaming EMG. I think most of the time we have streaming EMG is because people have done a lousy job at, at putting the cap on or positioning the person or getting little cushions set right. And often you see on, on T3 right here and T4, this big line of hash going across. And, and I had some EEG sent to me recently from a, a very well, well, a well-known firm that does brain mapping out of Arizona and these guys are really established they've been around for 30 years uh, considered to be one of the best and they gave me such a bad record it was unusable I'm like how can you do this and you've got this reputation for being a professional state-of-the-art ADHD treatment center and you're giving me crap that is throw it in the trash and it was, a lot of it had to do with those electric caps, and they probably had the chin, chin strap too tight. It was pushing on the jaw and firing off all this masseter muscle activity. Mm. And f temporals were got it. There's some stuff prefrontal. There must have been six channels that had pretty pounded out with EMG. And you're like, you can't work with that. Mm. So you have EMG, everything above about SMR up, your phase is completely ruined because EMG is all over the place. So you'll say you have dreadfully bad phase. Well, I want to, I mean, phase is an important measure. So you've got to have a clean record to see phase, especially in the beta bands where cognition is reflected. And if there's EMG in there, it's all a waste of time. And if the therapist doesn't know that, they'll process it and say, you got bad phase. They won't even realize the muscle is causing it. So anyway, we can kind of see here too that while there is an alpha spindle here, Overall, it was not happening at F7. Look at F7, not happening. F8, not happening. FP1, FP2, not happening much. And that's why we're seeing those spots on Comod. Uh, so I'll just take that down. So, yeah, I, I, so that's why we're seeing that. Oh, I should have looked at T3, but T3 probably would show the same thing if I look back at that. 
T3, where's T3? Look at T3. It's not, it's not doing what the other guys are. It's doing its own thing. So, um, Dave, we've got about five and then we'll take a break. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, or you want me to get through here? Yeah. Okay. But we don't want you to rush it. Okay, go mod again in alpha. We see that. Oh, that's no, already saw that one. No, we won't rush it. SMR co-mod, guide issues, again, the frontal areas are not doing what the rest is. Well, that's probably because her, run, her frontal area is going so slow, it's not even making waves in the SMR band, which we saw earlier when we looked at it, um, uh, the back is, but not the front. Oh, so that's not what I want to look at. Let me just show you that again here. Well, I'm, I'm really zoomed out. Uh, so we're not going to see it in this. Let me just let me just go to microvolts. We'll get it. We'll get it. Here we go. SMR band. Uh, there's more in the back. You can see it's a little lighter. If I was to zoom in tighter, the front is almost all four, five, six hertz. Uh, the back's got more running, but not the front. So sometimes when you look at your measures, and they seem odd, you have to go back to your these frequency maps just to see how much activity you're making. Because if you're making no activity, it could say that you're doing pretty good. And well, of course, if you're not making any, it, there's not much to compare against. So it could give you a good, a better indication just because there's nothing really to look at. Whereas if you make a lot of it, it could say you're doing really bad. Uh, and, and the truth is you're just making a lot of it, so there's more to measure. You have to get to know your database to some degree and how it works. And uh, they've all got quirks of various forms. So Comod, anyway, uh, misalignments um, to some degree. Now this was interesting here. Um, you got this PZ thing happening and it's in the beta band 24 to 30. And that was interesting. Now 24 to 30 are gonna be pretty small little wavelets. Let me find some for you. Well in here is getting there. If we were to count those, that's probably still a little bit slow. More like this up here. See those tiny little wavelets? That's more the 24 to 30 hertz, and that reflects cortical activity in, in little loops. So processing, and, and PZ for whatever reason is really not happening in that band. And it's, it's a little bit dirty because the electrode was flopping around, so it's a little difficult for me to see. If it's the electrode or if it's really, um, that's the precuneus area. And it's, it's really a little bit difficult to tell if that's the electrode that caused that or if it's genuine. So to really know that, we would have to really remap her uh, to know for sure. But generally when it's up in that band, if it's not muscle, I'm, I'm more inclined to think it's probably real. But there's a bit of a sloppy recording on that lead. I could not fix it. There it is uh, again there, yeah. Okay, eyes, uh, oh, networks. <clears throat> so, um, networks. This is uh, Delta. Got some problems with the right hand side, more so. Um, disconnected from other parts of the brain. Theta. Well, this is SMR. Yeah, the Theta and Alpha were pretty good, but look at SMR face. Again, what's not working? The front. The front is not working with the rest. Same thing with, uh, oh, beta's not too bad here. Uh, again, right side more so. We've got right side issues. Uh, this is now getting into the beta three group. Now we're seeing more left, right disconnecting here again. Uh, and this would have to be two in terms of to some degree expressing How well does she express, express, if she was to look at your face and try to express what is she seeing, and I think she's gonna struggle with it. Hey, she's not, doesn't see it well anyway, but putting it into words would also be, our, would be a struggle. Like you said uh, before, Dave, with, with your uh, really emoting very loudly to her, yeah. um, she can get that, but if, if she doesn't get that, what she does is say, um, are you mad at me? That's yeah, are you mad at me? Yeah. Yeah, 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 are you mad at me? That's where she defaults to, right? Are you mad at me? And how much could that be related to frustrating parents who were mad at her? 
I'm sure they were. And so she's making those assume uh, those assumptions. So anyway, we're we're seeing certainly some language issues as well as as well as the social stuff. Um, this generally is again to have to do with reasoning and processing and. And we know primarily she's got really a frontal issue. That's her probably her biggest issue and some OCD. Probably her biggest issues. Eyes open. Okay, then we'll take a break. Eyes open. And again, eyes open is interesting. Look at some of these big, big, slow wavelets. Okay, you don't want, that's, that's not good driving a car. She's gonna miss road signs. She's gonna probably change lanes and not see people when she and hit people, changing lanes. <coughs> um, uh, sure talking to you, mother. she's going to miss stuff. <laughs> hey, you sure that's not my mother? Oh, sorry, wrong <laughs> file. <laughs> Some eye blinks. Uh, slow stuff, and again, we see the fast back, slow front, for the most part. So on task, she is, yeah, she's going to have a lot of gaps on task. The electrode hopping around. And unfortunately, oh, there we go. There's not a bad section here. But again, so much slow stuff up front. And I really would wonder if she had a fall uh, or something like that. Uh, that uh, a trauma to her front, to her forehead. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, sometimes forceps deliveries do weird things to the brain, too, in the frontal regions. Uh, here she had a really blank moment here, not a seizure, but or, or but pretty blank. Believe me, she's like almost asleep, eyes open. Yeah, she has those where she will just like all of a sudden stop and be like, yep. "Yeah, that's it, uh, right there." It's, it's almost asleep, eyes open for two seconds. Yeah, and then she kind of comes back. So you can't talk to her, and you can see this. You can you can you can see it in her eyes. Yeah. You can see it in her face. You can see hear her breathing. Mm -hmm. Will suddenly change in that moment, mm -hmm. you know. And so you when that's one of the neat things about doing EEGs is that you start to learn to see the physical representation of the brain activity uh, to some degree, and it'll help you be a better therapist mm -hmm. as you do that because you'll you'll just know and you'll catch it. And you know it's a brainwave correlation with it. So yeah, there's times when she's pr pretty blank. Mm -hmm. And on eyes open, that would mean, yeah, a lot of inattentive moments, a lot of moments where she doesn't think. So if she just gets a brain jam, she just blurts out stuff. Yeah. Uh, but then she has her moments where she's, but look at here, she, she's got blank moment, clear, blank moment. Uh, so you had, you had like two seconds of <laughs> opportunity to say something <laughs> and then she was out again uh, I could explain some how she s catches parts of what you say yeah yes. exactly you know yeah parts of a sentence and stuff but I could see her all her brain really jamming up at times so she just if you present her with with a challenge or something like that she just fogs yeah. uh, temporarily and then we'll just blurt it out stuff as her, her way of dealing with it Hence the F you, I'm not doing it. Can't wait for it all. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know she's, uh, she's pretty, uh, what's the word, rude and crude. And I think that she sees that as being sort of a rite of passage. See, I can be rude and crude with these professional people. Therefore, and if they like me, because she might, might see you as being like alphas. Mm -hmm. And that's her way of saying I'm accepted by some pretty intelligent people, so therefore I'm a better person. I think that that might be part of what's going on with her. And maybe she's had some condescension from her parents. The love of the world. Uh, or the world in general. Yeah. Her parents are great. Oh, her parents are great? They're okay. Great. They're great. Okay. Maybe they're it was great. maybe the world. But you know, I'm sure they had their frustrating moments with her. I mean, what is Well, how do you, how do you not, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, and so you don't, and when a child doesn't reason well, you only have to lose your cool a couple of times and give them a smack in the head, and they resent you 10 years later. And that's still the big thing. The, the day you abused me, right? And that was the day they drove you crazy, right? You had a bad sleep and they drove you crazy. And, and they, if someone who can reason will go, well, okay, yeah, yeah, I was, I was pretty annoying that day, I understand, and they just let it go. She's not gonna let it go. Between not reasoning, frontally, and OCD, no, you cross her once and you've crossed her for 30 years. 
you'd have to really do a lot of redeeming yourself to make that up. But then she'd always bring it up, probably. So slow activity through here again in the front, faster in the back. It's all the way through the record, right? And on and off, on and off, on and off. Very inconsistent. Okay. This is her spectral, and on her spectral, uh, again, really, there's really no thalamocortical. Well, it could be happening at the four, the four hertz level, and that could still be because uh, she's still making at least those waves. But um, her ten hertz is pretty much entirely gone, uh, so her loops are not working well that way. So not a lot of neurons being recruited there. Again, this is eyes open, a lot like eyes closed was, very slow. Just very, very slow activity. Should be at 10. And it's prefrontal and, and cingulate, so it's OCD and lack of reasoning, lack of attention mm -hmm. and attentiveness overall, although it does come and go, as we see in the, uh, as we saw in the EEG. Whoops, same one still. Mm -hmm. So she definitely is a trainment, CES, but TDCS for sure. Now here's the Z-score here, and I have two standard deviations, and I mean, she's just pounded out, the whole low end is pounded out. Zoom in a bit, I mean zoom out, zoom out, and you'll start to see the patterns start to emerge better. Prefrontal, well, some cuneus stuff issue there, but these are still very excessive. Let's take her to five standard deviations. So there she is. That's the start of it all right here. Five standard deviations, which is way, way off. Mm -hmm. How many SD can you take that thing? Oh, I'm, I, can go, I can go to 10, I think. Wow. So five standard deviations is? Well, when you think that two standard deviations is 5% and 95% of the bell curve, right? So it's, it would mean that you're, yeah, when you're five standard deviations, you're on the very edges of the bell curve, or within the 5% on each end. Is it 5% or 4%? Two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half, sorry, two and a half on each end. 5% total. So it means by, there's, a, there's a slim chance that one in 20 might have that brainwave and be okay, is what it means. But she's at five standard deviations, meaning now there's, there's less than um, half a percent of the population that, one in 200 maybe. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of what they're saying by it. But, be, but because she's also in one direction only, divide that in half. So she's probably, maybe one in a thousand could have that brain wave and be considered normal, is what the distribution curve would say. But in reality, uh, two, st two standard deviations is considered clinical and often it's one and a half. <coughs> um, it does vary though, you know. You can have people, I've had some people who were two or three standard deviations off and they were doing actually pretty good. And some people that are too often, they're just a mess. Um, but then, of course, you look at other things like phase and all that other stuff that ties in, and you, you get a compounded uh, picture at the end of the day, right? Uh, I guess it could be if you're looking at a big picture, someone drew a big painting, and, and you can look at any one little spot of the painting and go, yeah, it's pretty nice. But you look at the whole painting and go, oh, what an ugly painting. Yeah. Uh, so we always have to, of course, take everything uh, together in one all of it and some parts will be a lot stronger than others so anyway yeah this is really good uh, TDCS uh, stuff in there sleep will improve this if she's sleeping well she'll do better but she's not right she doesn't sleep well at all no no so yeah, well she doesn't make much of an alpha rhythm either it's pretty low so that's why I get her to do the vitamin D at night put it on her chest and if she wakes up do it again anybody with poor sleep slows down frontally they don't slow down to four mind you uh, but they do slow down, so it all exacerbates it. So should we should we send her home with the AVE and do the sleep program? Uh, generally speaking, uh, it's hard to say. Some people will do okay falling asleep with the gear, and some people don't. Some people do much better. They sleep much better if they use the gear in the morning. But I would definitely do the vitamin D. A uh, drop of that and, uh, on her chest at night, and make sure someone controls that so she doesn't put 18 drops on because she just might. <laughs> She put the whole bottle. Right. Oh yeah, I'm not sleeping well. Let's put a whole bottle on. Let you be like, like that an hour later. So you have her caregivers do that when she goes to bed. Put a drop on, a thousand IU on, and and if she wakes people up in the middle of the night, put another drop on. You can even believe it or not, put a drop of St. John's Wort on. 
But be careful with the St. John's Wort. Don't overdo it. You can really make a person foggy-headed and uh, get over serotonin or, or whatever it does. Uh, I often use St. John's Wort myself, and I'll just put a drop on my chest too. Next, if I'm having, like say, when I'm doing these conferences, my brain gets racy, and I have a hard time, so then I'll add St. John's Wort to the mix. Just a drop, but orally, it can really mess you up. Um, and if you take it to bed or a drop orally, then you're probably okay. But if you do it in the middle of the night, you'll be foggy till noon. Uh, with St. John's wort, uh, whereas vitamin D doesn't seem to do that. But a drop of St. John's wort at bedtime, yeah, could also be something else to consider. Uh, St. Francis, interesting enough, is, a, is probably the best brand I've ever used. Uh, a. Vogel and Furlow are pretty good brands, but that, that uh, St. Francis is good stuff. St. John's wort? Yep. Yep. Yeah, they make good everything, actually. Uh, they make a variety of tinctures. And tinctures seem to far outperform pills. I think um, I can remember St. Francis. Yeah, yeah, how do you remember that? You're going to say, what was that saint thing, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> saint, whatever. I assume, I assume there's research on the St. John's Ward and sleep. 